Today, I'll show you how to replace skies in Affinity Photo. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with me, I've left a download link for today's images in the video description. We're going to start off by removing the sky in this photo. Because this sky is dull and gray all throughout it, we can use the Flood Select tool to select the sky. You can find this tool over here. If I were to click right now, you can see that we've selected too much because parts of the house have white in them. To reduce this, I'm going to lower the tolerance down to 10%. Then I'll click again. And now you can see that those parts that were selected aren't selected anymore. So right now we have the sky selected, but I want everything else to be selected so that we can remove the sky. To do this, we can invert our selection by pressing Command or Control Shift I. So now you can see that the lower half of our picture is selected and I'll press the mask icon to remove the sky. Then I'll press Command or Control D to deselect. So using the Flood Select tool does a pretty good job, but we'll go back and refine the selection a bit more later. For now, I'm going to go over to our other image, this sky image, and I'm going to copy and paste this into our document. So I'll press Command or Control C to copy it. Then back in our original document, I'll press Command or Control V to paste it in. I want this to show up underneath our original photo, so I'm going to click and drag this layer to the bottom. And now you can see we have a beautiful blue sky here. I'm just going to select the Move tool so that I can resize the sky. You can resize it to make the clouds however big or small you'd like, but there is a bit of field back here, so just make sure that you make it big enough that that field disappears. I think that looks pretty good. So now that we have the sky where we want it, it's time to refine our mask a little more. I'm going to click on the mask layer, and you can see right now that where the sky is on our layer icon, it's black. That's because it's been removed from the mask. Zooming in here, you can see that we have a bit of white fringing going on along the outside of our selection. I'm going to select the paintbrush tool, and I'm going to paint in black to remove that white fringing. I'll need to make my paintbrush quite a bit smaller, so I'll use the bracket keys to do that. Then I'm going to make sure that my hardness is set to a low percentage, and I'll go ahead and increase my flow to around 80%. Then I'm going to start over here on this edge, where we can see some of the fringing is even worse. So I'm painting in black paint right now, and because my paintbrush has a nice soft edge, it makes this transition line not very harsh, which is exactly what we want. So I'm just going to continue to paint this across the document to remove any of those white edges. I suggest doing this after you've placed your new sky in, because sometimes with this white fringing, you'll see we have white clouds behind it and the fringing isn't very visible, so we don't really need to paint too much. But it all depends on what background, what new sky that you've put in place. So I would suggest to just put your new sky in place or whatever you're working with, and then go ahead and paint to refine your mask. If you ever mess up, feel free to press Command or Control Z to undo, or if you've just painted way too much away, feel free to change your paint color to white paint to reveal that part of the mask again. Alright, with that finished, I think this looks really good. So that selection was pretty easy, the sky looks good, so now it's time to go ahead and make these two pictures look like they belong together. We'll do this by adding adjustment layers to make the colors in the images match. So I'm going to start with this main photo here, and first I'm going to go ahead and brighten the barn. If the sky really was this nice blue color instead of the dull gray, I think this should be a bit brighter. So going to our adjustments, I'm going to add a curves adjustment, 
and I'm going to make this brighter. Now I don't want the whole image brighter, I just want the house to be brighter. So I'll lower this down and to the right. And now you can see that only the lower part of the image is being affected. The next thing I want to do is add a color balance adjustment. This will allow me to change all of the colors in the shadows, midtones, and highlights to give them subtle tints to make them match the sky better. So I'm going to start in the tonal range of shadows. And then in the shadows, I'm going to add some different colors. So adding cyan doesn't look very good. So I'm going to go ahead and add a bit of red. And I'm going to add a bit of green. This will make the grass pop more. And then I'm going to add a bit of blue. That looks pretty good, so I'll go to the midtones, and I'm going to warm up the midtones by adding red. I'll add a little bit of green because I really want this grass to look more green, and I'll add some yellow. And in the highlights, I think I'll just add a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow. So now I can select both of these layers by holding shift and clicking, and you can see the before and after of those adjustments. I think this already looks like it matches the sky better. So now it's time to work on the sky. The first thing I want to do is I want to blur the sky a little bit so that the house looks like it's more in focus. So I'll go to our filters and then apply a Gaussian blur. I'll go ahead and bring the radius up to around three pixels. And I'm going to make sure to check on preserve alpha if you don't do this, you can see some transparent edges appearing in the corners. That's better. I think the sky looks pretty good, but I'm a bit distracted by how saturated this area looks. So what I'm going to do is paint on a few adjustments to decrease the saturation and darkness in the top of the sky. So to do that, I'm going to add an HSL adjustment first. And I'm going to make this a child layer to our sky. Then I'm going to decrease the saturation. I'll bring this to around negative 40%. Then I'll invert this layer with Command or Control I so that I can paint it only on that corner. I still have the paintbrush out, so I'll just change my color to white. And then I can paint over this corner. That looks a little too harsh, so I'm going to undo that with Command or Control Z, and I'm going to lower the flow to make this more gradual. There we go, that looks better. And the last thing I'll do to this sky is I'm going to add a brightness and contrast adjustment. And I'm going to brighten the sky a bit more. And I'm going to decrease the contrast. I think doing this matches the overall picture better. And I think these two images look really good together now. So at this point, we can be done doing the child layer thing, and we can move on to adding any adjustments that we want on top of everything. So since the pictures match, now I can go ahead and brighten or darken this image and add contrast, and the two images still look like they belong together. And there we have it. The sky has never looked better. <laughs> if you want to learn more affinity tricks, be sure to check out my free course in the video description, where you'll learn 10 simple steps to make any photo amazing. Thanks for watching, my friends, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.